Hey everybody, this is Tony Avina, and I want to teach you how to design t-shirts using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Today we'll be using Adobe Illustrator and the tools we'll be using for this um, walkthrough is the rectangle tool, the direct selection tool, the selection tool, the rotate tool, the shape builder tool, the appearance palette, the color palette, the type tool, and the shear tool. And all of these letters and brackets are the keyboard shortcuts for each of those tools. Some of the tools don't have shortcuts, but these are the ones that do. So the first thing we're going to do is open a new document. So you can do Command or Control N, Command N for Mac, Control N for Windows, or you can go to this drop down menu and go File New. And we're going to use our settings from the last one the last tutorial which was 1080 pixels wide by 1296 pixels height and you can change this between points picas inches millimeters centimeters or pixels we're going to use pixels for this one color mode rgb raster effects high 300 and these dimensions here will give us the proper dimensions when we export as a png later um, if we're uploading to Merge by Amazon. And you can use whatever settings you need for the whatever platform you're working on. So once I'm done with that, I hit Create. And the first thing I'm going to do is get my Rectangle tool and double-click on my artboard. And I'm going to make this 300 pixels wide by 500 pixels high. That's going to give me a nice rectangle shape. So the next thing I need to do is to make sure we're all on the same page here is open up my color palette, select the fill and hit none. Then select the stroke and click this little black swatch here. And that will make sure that we have no fill and we just have a stroke. If you need to, you can either switch back and forth between these two things by clicking on them or pushing X on your keyboard. So once we're there, once we've done that, we're going to get our direct selection tool, which is this white arrow shape, and click and drag across just this top line. And that's going to select those two anchor points. So the way that this tool works is I can either individually select an anchor point. I can select an anchor point, hold down shift, and click on as many more as I need to while holding shift. Or I can just click and drag across multiple anchor points. So we're going to click and drag across these top two. And then that gives us these two little circles. And we're just going to click on one of those and drag it all the way to the center. All right, once we have that done, we're going to click on our selection tool. And we're going to select this object. And now I'm going to mouse over this corner, this top right corner until I get those that double-sided arrow. And that will let me rotate this object. And I'm gonna hold, so once I have it there, I can rotate however much I want. And if I hold down Shift, it'll do it in 45 degree steps. And that's exactly what I need for this. I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. And now I'm going to go to my Rotate tool. I'm going to start rotating, hold down Shift, then I'm going to hold down Option, which on Windows would be Alt, and that's going to duplicate it and constrain it to 45 degree steps until I get it to that minus 90 degrees. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm going to use my Shape Builder tool. And the Shape Builder tool, what it actually, first I'm going to select everything. Direct Selection tool, just click and drag across everything. And my Shape Builder tool, what that does is instead of seeing this as two objects overlapping each other, it sees all of the parts where they overlap and segments them. So if I come over here and mouse over, see how it highlights that area? If I hold down Option or Alt on Windows and click, it trims that area off. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Hold down Option and click and it's going to trim that area. 
So now the next thing I need to do is I want to make this into one shape. So still with the shape builder tool, this time I'm not pressing anything on the keyboard. I'm just going to click and drag through all of the shapes. And now we have one shape. So I can use my selection tool, select that shape, and then I'm going to click this little two-sided arrow here, and that's going to swap the fill and the stroke. And now I have a solid object. So now I'm going to go to my scale tool. I'm going to double click on that. Uniform 150%. Click OK. And now I have the heart the size that I want it for, for this design. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do once we have our heart shape is we're going to go over here to the appearance palette. And if you go to window, you can find it towards the top appearance. And it's the one that looks like kind of like a sun. And now what this allows me to do is layer my fill and my stroke. So if I add a stroke, let's say I want to add a red stroke to this. And I'll make it 25 points. And you notice is the bigger it gets, the more it fills the inside part of that heart. Not just the outside, but the inside too. So if I drag this, this layer, I can grab it and drag it below the fill and now it's layered and this allows me if I want is I can make as many as many outlines as I want so I can change this color to blue make so I can change this color and I can keep going and just adding outline after outline but if my fill is at the bottom, then it doesn't work quite the same. So let me get rid of this blue stroke. I'm just going to drag it into the trash. I'm going to drag the stroke beneath the fill. And now I'm going to change the colors of these. So I'm going to go into my color palette. And I'm going to drag this. And you can just copy my, these values. So, and I'm in RGB. You can click there if you're not in RGB. You can switch it to whatever you want. Um, 133, 30, 45 for the stroke. So now I'm going to switch to the fill. And let's adjust this a little bit. Okay, that's decent. So we'll make this 201, 43, 32, or you can copy this hex value here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do now is add some type. So we can use the type tool. And the typeface we're going to use is lobster to bold, which will be linked in the description. You can get it from Google Fonts for free. And now we need to change these colors. So we want to get rid of the stroke. So we click on the stroke and then click on none. And then we're going to click on fill and change it to white. Oh, and I got to redo it. So now I'm just going to click this and click on white. And then I'm going to type out true space love. And we'll make this 72 points to start. Spell it correctly first. And you'll see the letting, which is the space between the, the um, lines of text, is pretty wide, and I don't want that. But first, I'll figure out how, how big the text needs to be. And we'll make this 200 points. Yeah, we can make it. Two fifty, and then paragraph. I want it centered, so we can do that here, or down here in the character palette. Actually, it's in the paragraph palette. You can you can make it a line left, a line center, a line right, and various justify options. So once I have that, I'm just going to drag this here, go to my character palette, 
and adjust the leading, which is right here. Set the leading, and it's set to auto, which and for them auto for this typeface auto is three hundred. So I'm just gonna click this bottom arrow until they get closer and closer and closer, and let's make it. Let's say two ten. So I'll set the leading at two hundred ten. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is align everything. So I just get my selection tool, click and drag across everything. And I can use the alignment tools up here. Or I can go to Window, Align. And I want Align Objects, Horizontal Align Center. Okay, so now we're almost done here. Well, the next thing I need to do is I want to rotate this design a little bit to the left. So the same thing is we click or we mouse oh, we select direct selection tool, select our type, mouse over this corner until we see the the double-sided arrow. And we just rotate and let's do this let's say about 15 degrees. Okay, now we can be done with this, but it just looks like we took the type and rotated it. So the next thing we can do to straighten that out a little bit is use the shear tool. And that is underneath where your scale tool is. Shear tool. Make sure that our type is selected. So I'm just going to click up here above the heart somewhere right in the center and then just drag it until that type. Well, let's hold down shift and drag it until the stroke, the vertical strokes on T and R in one U and V look fairly up and straight up and down, fairly vertical. So that's this is how it is now that it's sheared. This is how it looked before. Let's do that again. Shear tool. Okay, so now I have that sheared. Need to raise it up a little bit because our L is overlapping our outline here. Okay, move that over a little bit. Right now it's centered, but it doesn't look visually centered to me, so I will move that over just a little tiny bit until I find exactly where I think it looks good. Move it down. Okay, now this design is ready to go. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is select everything. Go back to my align tool. Align to, set, align to artboard, which is fine. If I like the way this looks, before I do anything, I'll group them. Object, group. So now this is all just one unit. I can just click on it, select it. Then when I go to my align tool, align objects, horizontal line center, it centers it right to the artboard as long as I have that option checked here. Okay, and since I'm doing this for uh, Merch by Amazon, I do not want this sitting in the center of the artboard because you really need to have it close to the top for it to print properly. This will print like pretty low on the chest. I'm just going to click and drag and hold down the shift so it stays aligned to the same spot on the grid. And that's it. If I want, I can make this bigger. You can make it whatever size you want before you, before you send it to merch. But this will be fine for now. And let's say you wanted to do more than one variation of this. And this is pretty cool. I could make a new artboard. duplicate this which all I'm doing is I'm using my selection tool holding down option and shift and dragging it to the next artboard and then I can use my align tool to align it to that oh it lines with the first one never mind I can use the my smart guides will show me how to align it and now I can change this to say whatever I want 
since I already have that, since I have that skew applied, the shear applied, it'll, it'll keep the shear when I change the words. So I can change it to whatever I want. So now I have two designs. And you might want to ungroup these if you're making variations. Oh, I actually ungrouped this already. But if it's grouped, to ungroup it, you go object and ungroup once it's grouped. So I can, I can scale this down. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do to export both of these designs for merch, I'm going to go to File, Export, Export As. I can name this Hearts, PNG, Use Artboards, and then make sure that All is clicked here. So you can have as many artboards as you need. I can have eight artboards, and I can just export one to which, whichever paint artboards I want, the first two, first three, all of them. Right now I'm going to use all. I'm going to press export. I'm going to do this high, 300 PPI. No anti-aliasing. If you like anti-aliasing, if you don't want a hard edge, you can do that. But I think anti-aliasing is best, especially when they're running a white um, underbase. So... That's it. I hit OK. And now I have hearts one and hearts two exported with the transparent background ready to go for merch by Amazon. And that's all there is to it. This is a pretty basic tutorial, pretty simple design, but I wanted to get you familiar with some of the other tools. You can start practicing and using them on your own projects, just see how they work. And we'll build on what we've learned in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification bell. We'll see you in the next one.